Hi. Hiya. Hello. 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 How are you? <laughs> I'm great. You're right. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. It's a little bit darker than it was uh, two weeks ago, so I'm just going to put the light on uh, yeah, <laughs> so you right. can see me. We're having the weirdest, <laughs> the weirdest uh, spring really in the UK. Yes, yes. Anyone that isn't in the UK um, listening in, yeah, it's been a bit weird. We've kind of reverted back to late winter with a lot of rain. <laughs> yeah, it rains. Uh, I think until April we had like a hazel fucking <laughs> storm and it was... You're, you're worse off because you're in Ireland, so uh, yeah, <laughs> you get more even, rain than we do. Even worse. And, 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 and hailing. We had hailing, so it's, it's great. In April. Late April. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, we had some in early April, and I was like, hmm. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's just becoming interesting. <laughs> yes, and it's also, yeah, it's very um, very rainy, very grey. We, we want the summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for anyone that's uh, joining us, uh, we are just waiting for about a minute or two minutes just to kind of give people a chance to kind of join at half past. Uh, so so we're just having a general chat. So feel free to say hello in the comments below. Uh, have you got your tarot deck ready, Luciana? Because we're I doing a practical do. Today. I actually have options. I have <gasps> an Egyptian tarot here that I love to use because it's beautiful, nice. beautiful tarot. Oh, I like that one. Yes, it's yeah, very, very I nice. like it. And then I have my my always favorite uh, toe tower. I, I I'm surprised that that's one of your favorites. It's uh, it's one that I find a bit tricky. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I find it very picturesque. So I find yeah. it really. I feel that like it it talks to me a lot. It communicates with me a lot because of all the imagery. Did you see my recent YouTube video? I think I think I saw that you made something about the toad uh, deck. Or... Yeah, I chopped the border off. You did, because you told me how yeah. that I know you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it looks great. I think it really looks much better. Like, I'm actually okay with working with this because it's not shouting words at me. Um, yeah. yeah, the words are, are due to, uh, I think they have to be interpreted. If you read it yeah. and you interpret, uh, they work. But, yeah, it looks a lot better cut off because otherwise you have this white sort of frame. Yeah, but they also look a little bit dull. What, um, and let me just find that card that you're on. Um, I don't know, Fortune, Wheel of Fortune. There's for Wheel of Fortune, isn't it? Is that, like, oh, how different does that look? Yeah, yours is purple. Because, yeah, it, well, it's, it, um, the light is a little bit yellow, so it's making it look a bit more purple than it is, but it just looks so much more vivid, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, that was the shocking thing. Yeah, mine is a little bit more like washed out colors. I thought I thought that, but as soon as I removed the borders, they just look oh. they, they kind of pop. Oh, they you just think you think that's the that's the difference? Uh, well, but I, yeah. I'm not gonna cut them because I have the addition with the gold <gasps> rims. Ooh, I, I I did a fake gold edge. Oh, so. how did you do that? Uh, sharpie, metallic sharpie. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, yeah it is. It's like I did a bronzed look, so it was kind of the same color as the back. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, if you guys have just joined us, we are just oh, my, my randomly glare. comparing. My yeah. Yours properly glints. Uh, mine doesn't glint. Mine just glimmers a little bit. Um, which is comparing tarot cards because we are doing a tarot practical uh, at the end of today's session. Um, so if if you do have your tarot cards, you can join with us and yes. play that with us. Um, I actually and, have yeah. I actually have another option that I'm gonna get it because I haven't <laughs> started reading with it yet, uh, and I'm actually curious to see how I can read with it because it's the um, is the wood. Um, oh, the wild wood the wild or wood the tarot. yeah. And it's, uh, yep. I think it's gorgeous. It's beautiful because it actually sort of tells a story. You can tell yeah. that you can tell like a tale with it, and that's why I really. I'm like really it. suited for like occultism and 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 um, like herbalism. So yeah, it's and a perfect one for tonight. And everything Nordic too, because the imagery is very Nordic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, well, I'm going to be using because um, I, I mostly just I mostly read mages, but uh, today we're doing both. So I'm going to be using um, the, the the modern witch tarot, uh, ah. which is 
been doing its rounds on on instagram so i thought i'd use that and because you're doing it i'll pull out my thoth as well um so we're all sorted uh whilst you're whilst you're doing that um if you have just joined us this is our last session in this series we are doing a session on um the the the, the elements in the body so we have gone through four different sessions looking at different types of elements and different aspects of elements um and now we're kind of just pulling that theory together uh, in a little bit more of a comprehensive view. So if any questions have cropped up over the last four episodes of us talking about occult herbalism and elements, then this is the night where you can get them answered. Uh, so feel free to uh, drop questions below and we will answer them as we go. Because luckily enough, we've got an interesting session where there's not an awful lot of material to cover because the majority of the material we've covered uh, so tonight, there's not an awful lot of new material. We're just putting it into perspective. So we've got a little bit of playing room. We're also going to do a um, practical session with tarot cards to show how you can use. Brilliant. Love it. Oh, look, you're almost doing my logo on my YouTube channel. Uh, um, yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, we're going to do a practical tar uh, tarot session showing how you can use tarot cards to almost be a diagnostic tool um, for how the elements are appearing in your body. Love that card. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do something interesting tonight. We're going to be stopping uh, after the theory session and then starting a new live session for the practical. Hi, Faye. Um, Hi, uh, because... Oh, you really made it. Because she told me that maybe she couldn't do it, so that's great. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, anyway. So we're doing that way so that um, the, the, the practical session will be up separately on IGTV, basically, and it will just give you guys a chance uh, to um, to kind of watch them separately if, if you kind of want to just look, watch the practical rather than go through the whole start. There's probably going to be about a five minute delay just whilst we upload very quickly the, the, the first session um, and get that uploaded and then we can start the practical. So just keep your eyes open. Uh, we'll get there as soon as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So shall we start with introductions? Now I, it is half past. I think after all these lives, uh, we shall uh, really keep it short. People already know us, uh, hopefully. True. <laughs> so True. this is my space. Uh, this is my online space and my online a uh, consultation uh, place, which is Luciana Bertiolistic. I'm very glad to hear uh, from you again, to see you again in these lives. Um, I do alchemy, I, I do alchemical therapy, I teach group sessions and I also do private sessions. And I am also the creator and owner of a beautiful natural cosmetics brand that is called Medicina Sederum. I will leave you the Instagram uh, under uh, in the description of this video, and maybe I'll put it in the comments now so you can visit it. So Medicinized Germ sure. uh, is my my brand, and I put everything that I know into it. So it's got uh, an alchemical process, uh, it's got Reiki, it's got aromatherapy, all, all in my product. So that is me. <laughs> it is a wonderfully wholesome, holistic, um, company and it's definitely worth checking out and having a look at those products there is not very many um, products that are kind of focused on those alchemical kind of interesting uh, and those slightly occulty holistic recipes so definitely worth checking it out uh, <laughs> me propping you a little bit yeah. um, so hello guys I am as always Paul who is the the, the witch and psychotherapist that runs uh, Modern Witchery on Instagram and Let's Talk Tarot on YouTube. My YouTube channel is dedicated to helping and teaching people learn how to read tarot cards from start to finish. It's quite comprehensive training, uh, maybe a little bit too much so uh, at times um, and I've been kind of asked to do some shorter videos but in, in future maybe. Um, I used to teach occult uh, herbalism in London um, and I used to run a very small mini company doing herbal products a little bit like uh, Luciana's but more historical. Um, I'm trained in psychotherapy and I hold a university degree in clinical hypnosis. I can be found on my Instagram. Feel free to DM me if you would like a tarot card readings uh, or would like any advice or help around tarot cards. Um, so that's a little bit about both of us. Um, anything to add there? 
and sorry anything to add um no just uh yeah go and i don't think i don't think your videos are too long i just think that we're too passionate about what i what we do so and we end up talking and talking and talking <laughs> yeah if you are new if you if you watch this yeah, this channel and this is the first time you've seen it on IGTV or live with us now, you'll you'll notice that we tend to kind of get very excited about certain things and can sometimes go off subject a little bit. Um, so feel free to tell going, us off. We end up uh, doing like fifteen minutes extra from the hour and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like talking about camphor and how to buy camphor. So <laughs> that's, that's going to be. I'm going to remember that always. Um, so anyway, let's let's get on to the topic for this evening. So like I said, we are talking about elements in the body. We've had four sessions on various different parts of uh, alchemical th uh, theory, um, Greek theory, even Ayurvedic theory on elements. Yeah. So today we are just combining those and putting it in a um, nice kind of easy to understand uh talk about how they are in the body and how you can use them for health so if you have any questions from uh from an elemental perspective feel free to put them below because we can have a lot of time we are then going to have a break uh, i'm going to end the live session and upload that to igtv and then we will be starting a practical session um about uh, reading tarot cards for a diagnostic kind of approach to elements. Um, that is so that we've got two separate videos on IGTV and then later on if you want to just watch the practical to remind yourself of it, you can do. Yeah, so cool. when we, we're finished with the theory, please rejoin us to do the practice. Um, Good, um, we're getting a lot of ni nice comments in the comments below. Thank you guys, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hopefully there's nothing uh, problematic with our enthusiasm. So um, where shall we begin? Let's start with a review of the elements. Uh, we're going back to Greek elements to make this a little bit simpler. Um, if you remember from our second session, we were talking about the four elements, which are fire, water, air, and earth. Each of those is not a pure element in uh, in the real life. They're, they're always an admixture. So when we talk about a plant being fire, like we did in the second episode. It doesn't mean that the plant are... burns. Well, sometimes it exactly. does. Exactly. So. <laughs> or it's just fire. You know, it's not just pure fire. It's got a mixture of all the elements in it. Otherwise, we would not be able to see it. Yes, that is very interesting, <laughs> actually. Because a, a plant that contains fire can be, for example, an, a spicy plant, but that plant is so, also made of water, of earth, because it feeds from it. So that means that if it feeds from it, it feeds from the nutrients of the earth, it feeds from the water, so that means that it contains it. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, the roots of any plant are always going to be slightly more earthy than the leaves. Uh, exactly. So it's always that, that kind of mixture. And I, I think this is really quite an interesting point for anyone that comes from a kind of a spiritual background that's kind of tipping their toes in druidism or witchcraft or modern paganism in any way. There's these concepts of the four elements that are normally kind of seen at the quarters of a ritual circle or a ritual space. And there's a tendency to see them as pure things like this is the direction of fire this is the direction of water but they don't really work like that in actuality you can't get a pure element because we're in the material world and we're, it's a mixture of everything exactly uh, even fire i remember we said this that even fire is not fire just because it needs oxygen yeah. to to be to exist so that's air yeah. and it needs the fire in it's a, a combustion uh, sort of material which is earth and so it's very interesting to to notice this because it's the same thing with the principles of ayurveda and with the principles of alchemy they are not what they seem to be but they exactly. are um they are a, an energy i would say they are a force that creates certain type of manifestation that is very interesting to know yeah and it's based on that platonic kind of idea and if people exactly. have got a background in philosophy it's that world of the forms like these these perfect ideals that live in a different world like an almost an astral world um that affect the reality on earth but they are never purely that thing so we recognize a chair as being a chair because it corresponds to the the perfect form of a chair 
um, in, in that kind of world of forms. Uh, I, I, I hope my philosophy lecturer sees this uh, from like 15 years ago and is like, see, he got it. Um, but yeah, so it's a bit like that. Um, so we're not talking about pure elements. So when we're talking about the self, we are a mixture of all the elements at the same time. And I think that that was a really nice comment that Luciana made when we were talking about Ayurveda, mm. that we are have that mix of all those elements or doshas in the Ayurvedic system at any given time. And it's just when one comes slightly out of balance and kind of becomes a little bit too much or one becomes too little that we start talking about someone having a specific element. So me being slightly blonde haired, so therefore I edge towards Pitta. Um, and I may edge towards Pitta or kind of fire in Greek elements uh, in summer more than I do in winter because summer exagger uh, exaggerates and makes it more aggressive in, in, in people. Exactly. So does and that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And what is that is exacerbated then in the body? So that means that it's the yeah. fire that is exacerbated. So what kind yeah. of manifestations can we have? Yeah. Yes. So um, the other other point that I want, want to kind of talk about this weird. Oh, sorry. I'm kind of jumping over from your point. Like uh, that is a question. That was a question. Let's do that. So, yeah. So what other aspects we can have any of the other four elements uh, or Ayurvedic two elements, if we're talking about that. So we can have more water, which is phlegm. Uh, I've got a question, bitter, I wouldn't call you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit bitter. Um, uh, so we can have a bit more of water, uh, we can have a little bit more earth and a little bit more um, yeah. air. Mm -hmm. And all of those will kind of edge towards, and in the doshas you've just got three, which are combinations of those four plus the fifth spirit. Yes. Uh, so whilst we're talking about those interesting admixtures of elements, um, if people read the tarot, and the practical is later is the tarot, so I'm not jumping too far from the conversation, um, each of those four suits are attributed to an element, which we most of us who are readers or even beginner readers will kind of understand. Mm. So, for example, swords are normally put towards fire, cups are normally put towards water, and so on and so forth. But some cards within those suits are also a little bit of other elements they're not all just pure water they can have a, a kind of a slightly more earthy aspect so for example four of cups could be have a little bit more earth it's a little bit more stagnant still well, yeah. solid and also that's when numerology comes in because the number four is a very earthy number and a number of uh, okay. stability and and structure yep Exactly. So we're then walking into something that's called sub elementals. We're talking about something having a main element. Uh, I'm doing the element of fire here. I don't know why. And then we're having like a, an element that sits inside that. That's a, a kind of lesser degree. So let's, let's say the cup suit is water, but the cups, four of cups is, is earth of water. Mm. So the overriding uh, element is water. It's still kind of displaying in the, uh, water arena, so the emotions, relationships, but there's an earthy aspect to it. There's a fixed or a stability aspect to that. So it's, it's playing in, in the the area of, of water. So it's a bit like a television series, I suppose. If, if like the television series, the name television series that's going on at the moment, <laughs> what, 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 what could one be? So, um, sorry, what? If name a television series, Friends, let's say Friends. Friends. So someone who is, so let's say Friends, uh, someone who is a comedic actor in Friends is not the same as a comedic actor in Laurel and Hardy, but they're both comedic actors. And that's exactly the same. So if you see Friends as the water aspect, like the water element, the overriding theme, and then the, the individual actor in that kind of situation as being the expression of that element. Yeah. So that's, that's so that gives, that gives levels to to actually to tarot reading and this is why tarot reading is is an art and it's something to be sort of practiced on yourself because yeah readings get really really deep and there's not only the number and the suit but then there's also the type the the, the art on the card that also will give yeah. you 
more uh, information. So it's really uh, an in, a, a, an intense process of, of analysis. Someone's, give, someone's given me hands made tail. I kind of gave up halfway through the first series because it was a little bit intense for me. But, yeah. um, but yes, so yeah, someone that is uh, an a, a comedy actor or even a dramatic actor in and handmade tale will be very different from a comedy actor in yeah like friends or uh will and grace or something like that they'll be more <laughs> more goofy in a in a kind of a will and grace they're not going to be a lot they're not going to have the freedom that, to to kind of express that much goofiness in handmade tale yeah that made me that <laughs> made me kind of wonder what are the elements of the major arcana but i think i think we can leave that for I don't the know, practical the session. Practical, ah, perfect. You're going to talk to <laughs> yeah. us about this? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. we will. Uh, we'll go in that in detail. Um, so, let's go elements to the in elements. the body. Yeah, let's go. I, I would like uh, to sort of pick up what we left when we were talking about the Greek elements. And we talked about humors. And I would, I would like to know exactly. what are humors and how do they express? Good. Yes. That. So... Basically, um, the elements when they go in the body are expressed through humors. Humors are four different liquids, basically. They're just like four fluids. different fluids. Fluids is a nicer word. Yeah, let's use fluids. Um, four different fluids that are present in the body. Um, so each of the four elements have a corresponding humor. Uh, so let's start with air air is blood blood in the body is a pretty well known <laughs> fluid but that corresponds to air so it is hot and moist yeah yeah much air for its characteristic blood. and also for its function because the function of air is communication is to transport yes. something from one spot to the other and that's exactly what blood does Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And um, so that, that's, let's keep with the ones that people will know. So uh, there's the, a liquid phlegm. Uh, not, not, not always best talking about this, but phlegm, especially when you've got like a head cold or a really horrible cold, you, you kind of produce more phlegm than you should do. Um, and that is linked to water. Uh, so water, winter, uh, things that are cold and wet. So you've got cold. What a humorous idea. Indeed. Uh, um, I was thinking a little bit about water in the in the body. I suppose it's also every because um, water also the function of water is cleansing and purifying. So I suppose every liquid of the body that uh, works cleansing, like saliva, like uh, the tears, yeah. like uh, even urine, all of those liquids will be water. And what they do is they cleanse yes. our body. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, all of these these humours, I mean, we've made two so far, so I'll try and kind of name the other two, but all these humours will have a purposeful use, like blood, for example, is the vital energy, it carries the life force, um, but when it kind of gets too much uh, in your humour theory, it can kind of cause a little bit of imbalance or a little bit of issues. Um, so for the other two, the other two are two different types of bile. Uh, so we, we have a kind of a word in English called bilious or uh, uh, so that, that that kind of comes from the idea of bile being a, a type of fluid in the body and this kind of theory. So there is yellow bile and black bile. Yellow bile is fire, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes called cholera um, or choleric. Mm -hmm. uh, and then black bile is um, earth and sometimes called gall. So the yellow bile is fire, black bile, earth. And do you know what these biles are in the body? Because obviously the, the yellow yeah. bile so, seems to be the hepatic and the, the biliar. Um, um, I, I forgot the organ that produces it. <laughs> yeah, so tr like this is historically before people were legally allowed to cut up bodies. Uh, obviously there was a, a big... Uh, embargo on people dissecting and it had to be to kind of done illegally and mostly in the 1700s so this is quite early before that so it doesn't necessarily correlate to a liquid per se mm -hmm. um, but it so, is like a uh, yellow bile and fire in the body it is yeah. the biliar liquid and it's because yeah so that's linked to the uh, the enzyme liquids from the liver 
Um, yeah. But it's not like it's a yellow thing that floats around. And they very much saw it as, as floating around the body, all the way around the body. Yeah. Um, so because, it doesn't again, quite... because it's an ideal sort of, it's the idea's world. So it's the, yes. the ideal uh, composition of, of everything that exists, I suppose. Yeah, um, I've, I've just got a kind of a message about urine. Uh, it's not not quite linked to, to, to urine. Uh, urine was a uh, waste material. So it combined lots of different parts of these these four humors, just like um, uh, fecal matter, using the nice medical terms, um, that kind of comprised with, with other things. So I don't know, I've not really looked too much in waste material, but I imagine the whether the, they, they kind of saw the solid uh, excrement being um, earth. more earth yeah. and water and the, 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 the fire and the, 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 the uh, air being more liquid. I, I'm not quite sure where, whether they've split those, but, uh, but it, they just seem as waste material, so they're a combination of all. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, because one thing <laughs> is the elements in the body and the other thing is the functions of the body. So the body has a nutrition function, it has an excretion function, it has obviously, right? So we're not talking yeah. about the functions of the body, but we're talking about how these elements show up in the body. We said that water shows up in the liquids because it has a cleansing function. So the elements sort of connect with the body because of their function. We can yeah. find them in different components of our body. So if um, we said that water is the cleansing act, so it's every liquid that, that cleanses the body, we said uh, the first one was air, so it's the communication. So also air will be the nervous system, which is the one that yeah. communicates uh, all the information of the body. Um, fire has the function of breaking down and separating matter. So like fire transforms and fire destroys, right? So it, yeah. it, it is the bile from the liver because what the bile yeah. does is uh, it decomposes and breaks down the nutrients that we consume. And the, the black bile was seen as coming from the kidneys and the spleen, maybe even the gall bladder. No, the gall was um, gall cholera. So, uh, so yeah, so it was seen as kind of coming from those those organs as well. Uh, someone was just kind of saying, it's like thinking of yellow things. Well, there is a kind of a little bit of a logic to that because people that were seen as having a more yellowy skin and a yellowy pallor mm. were considered to be choleric. So looking at someone's skin tone uh, used to be used as part of the diagnostic factor. So if, if someone looks like Bart Simpson, they're a little bit more choleric than uh, if someone looked like a Smurf, who would be a little bit more phlegmatic. Um, right. So there is that, that association. Um, people that have an excess of black bile tended towards melancholy. So they would be often seen as uh, having kind of dark sunken eyes, eyes and a kind of a very waxy earthy tone to their skin yeah um, and this is a property so of earth too when we were talking about ayurveda um the dosha that is composed by earth is the yeah. one that tends more to lethar lethargy and um and sort of um depression and sort of to to be brought down because that's yeah. the the property of I, I can hear a lot of noise on your side is it like the street uh, or it's probably is the street. Let me just close the window. It is that uh, time of day. Uh, yeah, it's kind of warm in here too. It's like 14 degrees now. And uh, well, where? Warm. That's warm for here. There you go. 14 degrees. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of warm here too. And I was going to open the window and then I thought the same. It's going to be noisy. So I just, I'm just being a little warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's a little bit warm in, in, in this room as well. So that's why I had the window open, but never mind. Um, so and there we is have, two... Sorry, we, we still have... Uh, we didn't say what the earth will represent in the body. Black bile. Uh, yeah, but like what is black bile and what is in ah. the body? So I don't know yep. the relationship with black bile, but actually earth in, bud, in the body will be everything that gives us structure. So it yeah. will be uh, the bones and the tendons and all the skeletic sort of uh, system that will be the yeah. earth of our body. And the interesting thing about this is that just like in plants, um, the earth material becomes ash. It becomes ash in ash. Yes. So our own ash is our earth. So that is the matter of our body. Yeah. 
think that yeah. maybe the blood and, and other, obviously the nervous system, those are things that won't become ash. So they're not earth. No. So what, what yeah. becomes ash is earth. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. As as a as a fluid human, uh, like black bile or um, that that gall is is produced by the the, the kidneys and the spleen. Um, that is interesting. It's yeah, it's the enzymes behind that. But like I said, that these don't kind of technically correlate, and it is is better to see it as as like you're saying, kind of like the structure of the body. Yeah. Um, rather also, than using a kind of a yeah something that doesn't quite work. <laughs> yeah, but also earth. Has this um, this also this function of putrefaction? Earth has this. Uh, you know, that's a funny enough. Just the comment that's happening before blackness in the body kind of puts in mind rotting or rotten teeth, etc. Yeah, putrefaction. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Earth... So we're talking about the alchemical state of putrefaction. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, putrefaction brings uh, is the process in Earth that brings new life. So some things need to rot to create microorganisms that are going to develop yeah. something new. So that is the yeah. function of Earth too. So it could be Earth in the body could be related with waste material too. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, and it is that breakdown. Like when we were talking about our chemical stuff, uh, it's the, the breakdown of things before we can kind of start purifying them. So that, that kind of first state of breakdown or death or rot um, or putrefaction is that first stage of breaking things apart before we can kind of start purifying. So yeah, so it's, it's like the, the beginning of new life, beginning of, of exaltation or transcendence. Um, Important so, step, so, first step. Yeah. Like if you don't do that, if you if you don't like putting your hands in the earth, then you cannot uh, start. I, th I think I think um, Deborah Harkness, the the, the author. Um, the uh do, 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 the the discovery of witchcraft books that are now like a tv series i think like part of her little thing is something like um it all starts in darkness um and well, it always I mean, puts in mind to me i mean putrefaction. <laughs> visita interior a terra is yes. the interior of the earth is the first step of the vitriol which is the the opera magnum let's say of alchemy yeah. And the first step says visit the interior of the earth. So that means yes. getting in touch with that process of uh, destruction and dissolution to start your process because you need to separate. The function of, of earth is, as we said, earth is cold and dry. And yes. the function of coldness and dryness is separation, separation and contraction. So we need to do that separation to separate the components of the yeah. matter that we're working with to be able to purify them. When they are all together and, and uh, stuck together, they cannot be purified. Yep, agreed. So shall we talk about how to work with these? Because uh, we kind of made mention a little bit through the episodes, but let's kind of really confirm that. So in, in kind of natural magic, in, in kind of like early when magic was mixed with with medicine quite early in the kind of 1600s and before um there were kind of two main terms and they, they're still used in quite a lot of herbalism stuff um sympathy and antipathy mm. so working with something in sympathy and working something in antipathy the normal thing for elements is to work antipathy but i will explain both of them so it, antipathy means um, changing something based on their, uh, what's called enmity, their, their kind of being antagonistic towards each other or being counter or opposite. So fire and water are opposite, earth and air are opposite. So you can balance one by introduction of the other. Uh, so it's kind of almost like a scale. So we've got too much fire on this side, so we introduce water on this side and they kind of balance out. So that's antipathy. That's quite common. Um, so in medicine, if someone has a cold, uh, like they're feel, looking snotty, they have too much phlegm. We I like know the word, that is. because the word cold is just, they are cold. <laughs> I know, right? It's just, <laughs> it's uh, like life has done us a favor with these words. Yeah, and also it's very interesting because a cold then is a coolness in the body, but then outside it expresses with a fever. So it, it yeah. expresses the opposite outside. 
there's a cold yeah, yeah. Rest, but it's it, the it shoots out that, as a heat. Exactly, and that's the body trying to balance it. And I think that, that those kind of observations are exactly where this kind of antipathy came. But you get a cold and your body tries to heat itself up. So if we introduce heat and help the body along, therefore we'll also help that. So if you have a cold, hot liquids or hot food is, is, is what's kind of normally recommended. If someone's feeling quite snotty and phlegmy, um, hot drying herbs are usually introduced. So uh, ginger, uh, cinnamon is the big one in, in Ayurvedic mm. for, for kind of coughs and, and too Pepper. much phlegm. Pepper. Mm. Um, so those kind of herbs, especially as an electory, mixed with, with honey uh, and taken. Oh, yeah. Even uh, turmeric is good with, with honey too. It's really good. Yeah. And turmeric, you normally use it in cooking it to, to heat very cooling things, which is why this, this turmeric latte stuff kind of, kind of, kind of came from, okay. uh, was that it, milk is a very cooling liquid. It kind of goes towards the phlegm aspect. Um, yeah. So putting like warming herbs in it like a chai, it kind of balances it for the body. And this is kind of where that, that turmeric thing came from, I think. That um, is very, very interesting. At least say it, basically. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, that is very interesting. Uh, so we can see how to balance the, the foods and the and the herbs that we consume, that we eat mm. or drink. Exactly. So like quite often you kind of get give, um, the, especially in Indian cooking, you always balance the food with, with the correct herbs and spices to kind of make it a little bit more palatable or easy for the body to deal, deal, uh, deal with. Absolutely. So, that's, that's the good thing about Ayurvedic cooking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's why I'm a fan of it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's antipathy, like uh, introducing the opposite to balance the other. Now, sympathy. Sympathy is odd. Uh, you are introducing the same thing uh, or a similar thing to kind of change something. I would say now, it's like compatibility. Yeah. In, in, in witchcraft and in magic, it's very easy. Uh, we do something to represent something. So, for example, uh, if we were do, doing a love spell, we would have like two figures uh, that represented the two people that we wanted to fall in love. Yeah. Um, so it's a sympathy, like something that is like that is represented by like, and we are kind of causing it by sympathy, something that that represents or something that is similar to. Mm -hmm. In medicine what this normally is like especially is around uh poultices and things that are laid on the skin to draw things out so if someone has a fever laying hot herbs as a poultice may draw things out uh so like laying things on the feet for example to draw out the, the heat um is, is kind of where that, that sympathy comes from. It's not oftenly used. It's not something that that is greatly used in kind of medicine, but there is a little bit of it. So it's introducing the like to uh, affect like. It will be like the, the similar to attract the similar. It's, it's yes, exactly. And that's why it's normally to draw out. So, so like attracts like. Um, so as a poultice, it will draw it out um, and draw it into the poultice, which is the, the kind of the early idea. The other way that you can do sympathy, and if, if, if this kind of confuses people, just drop it. It's really not important. But the other way that you can do sympathy is with the active and the passive elements. Mm. So uh, fire and air have sympathy with each other because they are both active. Um, so one can draw the other or one can influence the other. So if there's too much heat, it might be easier to introduce some air mm. rather than introducing the opposite. And this is kind of almost a bit psychotherapeutic. Uh, in fact, that's if someone is so far one thing, introducing the opposite. It will be too may, shocking. Too shocking or too, too much. So you introduce a, a similar thing that's a little bit lesser because air in uh, includes both elements. It includes a little bit of water and mostly air, fire, right. uh, those primary elements. Uh, so you're kind of drawing something slowly across a little bit more more generally. But that's that similarity as well, sympathy. Well, so like here, I said, yeah, the comment, uh, I was really, I was laughing about the comment here because they say it's like a vaccine political. <laughs> but <laughs> actually uh, the vaccine, yeah, it's introducing a little bit of the same, but yeah. in, a, in a tolerable amount. So the body can get used to it, uh, an immunization, like we say. And it's the same when we enter a new therapy with a new herb. 
and we yeah. start introducing it little by little, but as often as possible, very often, so the body can start sort of um, compatibilizing with that herb and sort of integrating yeah. it. Uh, it's actually very interesting that the compatibility theory or the similarity theory with uh, medicines, because yeah. one thing that we always think about medicines is that if they are horrible, they must be good and they're gonna heal me. <laughs> Yeah, and most most often when we do alchemical preparations and etc., the being compatible and the liking the medicine and the ta liking the taste of the medicine is one really important um, aspect of healing, really, because you yeah. are you are more likely to repeat the drinking of a medicine that you really like and you're going to incorporate it to your routine than something that you have to sort of you know pick your nose when you. are Close yeah. your nose when you're drinking it. So in that case, I think in that case, maybe similarity and, and compatibility for healing is important. The medicine yeah. has to be compatible to the person that is drinking it. Yeah, yeah, and and, and prepared in the right way, you know, uh, definitely. Like, um, you know, there's different ways of taking medicine or having medicine. We mentioned poultice or, or you know, food medicine in, in one breath, but we've also, you know, got tinctures, which we what you were referring to. Um, pills, uh, dried preparations mixed with honey, like an electory, like we were talking about. So we accidentally mentioned an awful lot of preparations within, what, 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the slightly mercurial, um, scatterbrained throwing of, of information, uh, yeah. our wonderful audience. Um, so that pretty much goes over everything I really wanted to talk about, about elements in the body. So I just want to kind of pause and allow anyone to ask any questions they'd like. Um, the, our next, uh, whilst you're kind of writing those, our next kind of move is to um, stop this live session, quickly post it on IGTV, and then start a new session to do a practical around using tarot in a diagnostic <laughs> way. So if you guys have got tarot cards nearby, please go and grab them. Uh, or, or use that break. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long it's going to take me just to quickly upload that to IGTV, but it should be about four or five minutes. Four or five minutes. Connect. So we'll be back. Please be back with us to practice some tarot. Um, uh, yeah. so, um, Paul is going to read me. He's going to do a throw for me, and then I'm going to do a throw for him after I learn how to do it, because it will be my first time uh, to <laughs> practice in this lovely technique. So join us, because it's going to be really interactive and fun. And even if you have uh, any questions and you want us to maybe draw a card for you, we can do that too. As a yeah, 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 definitely. I was just yeah, looking at this fun. card, and we, we can close this live with this lovely, lovely card. See, it's I, I just think the imagery is so, so nice, and it's this it's called struggle, I think. Endurance. It's endurance. And it has so much uh, like art level. You know, it's the fire. It's yeah. you and the fire, just a primordial survival. Um, that's great. I love that. Yeah. It, that, that. That is, that's almost like that, that um, first state of darkness. Uh, Absolutely. It's going in and keeping that or internal the fire. Cave. Yeah, it, oh, yeah um, I've so just seen a couple of a couple of people joining. I'm just letting them know uh, we're just waiting and pausing for some questions, and then we're just going to round up this session and then start a new live, uh, doing a practical with tarot cards and doing an elemental tarot card spread to use as diagnosis. Um, yeah. So, so they, feel uh, free to join there. Here's the uh, they are asking. Yeah, what is the username name on on uh, IGTV? Well, uh, it's our both. Instagram, so I don't know what the question uh, means. Yeah, I, I think it's someone new to, to Instagram. So um, when we post to IGTV, like I said, it comes under our profiles. Yeah. Uh, so it will go on to the main stream, uh, which is just like your normal everyday feed. Uh, and then you, that you can just look find up. things by hashtags. But you can just go straight onto one of our profiles. And then instead of seeing the feed photographs, you can just select IGTV. And that'll be all of the videos and lives that we've done. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So All right, let's brilliant. Get ready. So I shall speak to you in a few seconds. <laughs> yes. Please, everybody, get comfortable, get a table, and get your uh, tarot decks if you want. And see you in a couple minutes. Bye. See you in a bit. Bye.